All right, so we're given demand equation, supply equation. You know, we can graph supply and demand equation and get equilibrium price of $6, equilibrium quantity of two units. Uh, and then uh, if, we were to, if we were to look for the producer surplus on this graph in equilibrium, it would be producer surplus is the area below the price and above the supply curve. So it would be represented by this triangle. So there's our producer surplus. But then what if the government again came in and put in a price floor of $8? So that says the price can't go below that $8. So we have this new, this new selling price of $8. Bucks. How is that going to impact the producer surplus? Right. So how do you find the producer surplus with that price? Saving? Okay, well, how many units are going to be sold? Right? If, if the government puts this price floor in, uh, you're going to look at where the price floor intersects the demand curve and where it intersects the supply curve. And this says, well, uh, consumers want to, want to purchase at this $8, consumers want to purchase this quantity, suppliers want to produce this quantity, right? And, and so really what's going to happen in the market is that yeah, they, the, the suppliers might produce this quantity QS, but, but this is the quantity that's going to get demanded. And so this is how many units are going to be sold. So there's going to be this extra surplus in the market. So what's the producer surplus? Well, now it, it's no longer this triangle. Now it's they're getting paid a higher price, but they're selling fewer units. So they're not selling this many units. They're only selling this many units. And now, I need some colored chalk. But now the producer surplus, instead of this area, is... this area. So there's your producer surplus. Right, so how are we going to calculate that? Well, one way to calculate it is to say, well, I, I can figure out this point and this point and this point and I know I'll then be able to figure out this area and the area of this triangle. Alright, how are we going to go about that? Well, this one is probably the easiest. We know this point. Uh, we know the, the, the quantity here is zero. And so we can go back in. This is part of our supply equation. So we go back into our, our supply and say, well, if what's the price when the quantity being produced is zero? And that price should be 2. So this, this intersection is 2. Alright. What is now, what is this price? Alright. And so this is the intersection of this line with the supply curve. And so we need to know the quantity that's being produced. How are we going to figure out the quantity that's being produced? Uh, sorry, the quantity being uh, uh, consumed, right, with this price ceiling. Well, we can go into our demand equation and say if the price is eight dollars, then consumers are going to demand QX units, right? And so, some high-end fancy math. It's going to say, well, then the consumers, if, if the price is set at eight bucks, then the consumer is going to demand one unit. So this quantity demanded with this price ceiling of eight is one. Oh, that's, that's, uh, so that's one unit. So now can we figure out what, what this price is? Again, you go back into the supply equation now. Let me get rid of this. Go back into the supply equation and say, okay, what's the price going to be when 
consumers are supplying, producers are supplying one unit. And that should be 2 plus 2, 4. So the price back to 4 whenever suppliers are supplying one unit. So this would be a price of 4. Alright? And now that you've got this point, this point, this point, this point, and this point, you should fairly straightforward to go in and calculate the area. So the area should be uh, 1 times uh, 4. So this, this should be 4. And then this is uh, 2 times 1 divided by half, 1 half. So that should be 1. So 4 plus 1, the uh, producer surplus is equal to, to 5.